Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some more test type problems, smaller problems that could be in the format of multiple choice questions. So we have on July 1st, a company paid $3,840 premium on a one-year insurance policy with benefits beginning on that date. What will be the insurance expense on the annual income statement for the current year ended December 31st? So once again, I'm going to take a look at the trial balance. This will be an unrelated trial balance, but I think a trial balance is a good cheat sheet to use. So when you're practicing problems, or if you can on a test, I would have one open. So here's the trial balance, assets up top, liabilities, and then we have the equity section, income and expense. So I'm just going to try to think about the uh, accounts that we are looking at here. So we're looking at insurance. So if I was to think of the balance sheet account, this is going to be an adjusting entry related to insurance. We're talking about prepaid insurance. And if we're thinking about the income statement account down here, we're talking about insurance expense. Insurance expense generally only go up. The adjusting entry that we are going to have here is a debit to insurance expense and a credit to prepaid insurance. Now, we might be saying, well, how did we get prepaid insurance on the books? When does prepaid insurance be, be something that is on the books? And note that whenever we pay for insurance, we pay for it before we use it, meaning we don't have any coverage at the time we paid for it. We're going to get the coverage in the future. That's why uh, when we pay for it, it goes into prepaid insurance. So if we think about that, then on July 1st, a company paid uh, 3840 premium. So what happened on that date? We paid cash. Cash went down, so we credited cash on that date. I'll bring it down here, credit to cash. And that I'm going to make a negative for my credits are going to be negatives or bracketed. And so we're going to say this is a credit. And then the debit is going to be to not insurance expense, but it was to prepaid insurance. That's how the insur that's how the prepaid insurance gets on the books. So now we have prepaid insurance on the books at uh, 3,840. That's what this number would be if we were using the same problem. We have prepaid insurance on the books. Now we need to determine how much should that go down by in order to record the insurance expense on the year. How much of that has been consumed in the year? Well, if we took the amount of 3,840 and we said that that's for one year or 12 months, we're gonna say 12 months, how much is it per month then? It's gonna be the 3840 divided by 12. So that means the monthly policy would be $320. So 320 per month, I'm gonna go ahead and underline that, so that was a calculation. And then we gotta figure out, well, how many months have passed? Well, July 1st is the, the date we bought it, so remember, we bought it on the 1st, so I'm going to include July as I count it off on my fingers. <laughs> July is included. July, August, September, October, November, December, six months. So we're going to say six months times six. So uh, 320, I'm going to underline that, do this underline here, times six months equals the 320 times the six months. So that would give us the uh, 1,920. So that's going to be the adjusting entry. What the adjusting entry means that we consumed this month insurance. That's going to be the expense now that we have over the time period. That will be the debit for the adjusting entry. And the credit will then go to prepaid insurance, reducing the prepaid insurance. So note what they could ask. Uh, they could ask how much was consumed, how much was used, which in this case was uh, the one nine. 201920 they could ask how much is still remaining and if we had an orig original 3840 that's what's in the prepaid insurance and then we decrease the prepaid insurance by expensing it that would be this debit minus this credit that means that we have left over in prepaid insurance the same in this case because we took half of it it happened to be half a year uh, 1980 uh, uh, 1920 if it was anything other than half a year, then these two numbers would not be the same. So this is how much is left. This is how much was consumed. They could ask you either of those questions. So be careful on the multiple choice question on. Next one says that a company has 6,970 in net income for the year. Its sales were 14.9 for the same period. Calculate the profit margin. All right, so the profit margin, we're, that's going to be a percentage. And so in order to do this, we're going to take first our income statement type calculation. We have sales. Sales is going to be $14,900. we are going to take all of our expenses. I'm just going to group them. This is total expenses. We don't know what that number is. They gave us net income. Net income. 
net income is the 6970. So this is basically our income statement. If I was to back into what expenses must be, this minus this has to equal that. And therefore, it's gonna be a subtraction problem. This minus this must equal this. If we were to see that algebraically, it would just be 14 minus all the expenses, x basically equals the 6, 9, 7, 0. And then we, we would solve for the expenses by subtracting the 14 from each side. So we can do that here. I'm just gonna say it's the 14 minus the 6, 9. So that's all we're gonna, we're gonna pick that number up. Now we don't fully need that, but I think it gives us a better picture of what is going on here. So that's gonna be basically our income statement. Now to, to calculate the profit margin, we're gonna take the net income divided by the 14, 9 sales. So we just take the net income, which is uh, 6970, divided by the 149 in sales. And if I select enter, it gives me zero. It's not zero. Why is it zero? Because we have no decimals. So we got to go to the home tab. We got to go to the numbers group. And we could add decimals. And notice uh, the decimals go on. So it's not even. If we select the um, percent, that'll give us to two places. Now, it depends on how the answer is formatted. If it only wants two places, it would be 47. If it wants more than two, 47.8. More than that, 40, I mean, sorry, 46.8. More than that, it would be 46.78. So notice Excel's rounding that. You need to be careful on the rounding in all these types of problems. Next one says, company paid insurance premiums for the four months in advance on November 1st. The balance in the prepaid insurance account for a before adjustment at the end of the year is 5,800 and no adjustments had been made previously. The adjusting entry required on December 31st. So remember what's happening here, we're talking about insurance. So this is an adjusting entry. If we look at our trial balance or this is a different trial balance, but if we consider a trial balance, there's gonna be one balance sheet account, one income statement account. We're talking about insurance. So we're talking about prepaid insurance on the balance sheet. It's an asset up here in the asset section. And we're talking on the income statement, insurance expense. It's an expense, it's down here in the expense. What's gonna be the journal entry? Well, we know expenses generally only go up. So the expense has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by debiting it. Expenses always go up with a debit. And that means that if we debit the expense, we must be crediting prepaid insurance. That's going to be the journal entry that we know that that's going to happen. Even if we don't really understand the process, we know that, okay, we're going to debit insurance expense and we're going to credit prepaid insurance just by thinking about what an adjusting entry is and we can figure that out. So that's going to be debit and credit. But now we got to figure out, well, how much are we going to debit and credit? So then we got to think about a bit deep, more deeply on what happened here. We bought the policy. What happens when we buy the policy? Well, uh, we're going to pay cash for it. Cash went down with a credit and we debited it to the account called prepaid insurance. Why didn't we just expense it when we paid for the insurance policy? Because the insurance policy has not yet been used. It's going to be used when we consume it uh, through the policy. So as the policy expires, it's going to be consumed. So prepaid insurance then has a balance. If we put the prepaid insurance here, if we were to underline the prepaid insurance or make it into a T account, let's make it look like a T here. We'll underline this and I'm gonna put this on the left side, have a left border. So there's our T. Prepaid insurance had five eight in it. And now the adjusting entry, that that's what would be here on our trial balance. The adjusting entry needs to bring that down for the amount that was consumed for the period. So how do we figure that out? That's going to be the amount that's in there, or the amount that was paid, 5-8. And then we're going to say, how many months does the, does the policy cover? Be careful, it's not a year this time, it's four months. So four months is how much it's covered. So if we divide that out, I'm going to go ahead and underline that. If we divide this out, then how much per month? It would be the 5-8 divided by four. And that means that per month, the policy costs 1450 now we have to decide, well, how many months have passed? We bought it in November 1st, not November 30th. Therefore, we're going to include November when I count it on my fingers. November 1st, uh, 1, <laughs> and December 2. So we're going to multiply that times 2, the amount of months that have expired to our financial statement date. So we're going to say this is the 1450 per month times 2. 
and there is the adjustment. So that's going to be what it's going to be debited to the expense, consuming it throughout the year, recognizing the expense at the time period in which we consumed it in order to help us generate revenue matching principal. What happens to prepaid? Well, that means we just credited the prepaid. And I can just say that's the credit right here. And then what is the balance then? Well, it's going to be a debit of this minus this. That's the balance. That's what's left after this transaction has taken place. So remember, they could ask you either question. They asked us for the journal entry this time. A question like this could ask you for what was uh, expended, what's left in prepaid insurance. Once again, they happened to do it, so it was just half of the, the four-month policy. Two months had expired, therefore these two numbers are the same. But if it was only one month that had expired, then they would not be the same. So it's not always the case that this is going to be the same as the amount that's expired. Next one says that on November 1st, company loaned another company 260000 at a 9% interest rate. The note receivable plus interest will not be collected until March. So that's the following year. The company's annual accounting period is December 31st. The amount of interest revenue should be reported uh, in the first year. Okay, so what happened here is we loaned some money out. And when we loan money out, just like if we rented someone an apartment, they're going to basically pay us the rent on the money that they're using for that time period. That's called interest. And the rent that's going to be due is not going to be paid to us until after they close. So we have this adjusting entry that we're going to have to enter here as of the end of the accounting period, which is December 31st. Just like if we had, you know, in this case, November and December, two months of rent that someone had lived in or worked in our office building and they had not yet paid us we'd say well yeah they owe us that money as of the end of the time period so that's going to be our adjusting entry if we the trial balance on that now we might not have this particular account there but we can kind of think about what it would be if we have uh, something that is owed to us that's going to be similar to basically a receivable now it's not going to be usually an accounts receivable we we'll usually break it out to something like interest receivable we're going to have some kind of interest receivable that is due to us as of the end of the time period, just like if we had rent that was receivable as of the end of the time period. And then what's going to be the income statement account? Well, you could say it's it's going to be like revenue and income. It's going to be similar to that because it's going to be a type of revenue and income, but we'll we usually name it a certain type of revenue and income, and that will be interest revenue or interest income. So those would be the, the accounts that would be affected. We know that income has a credit balance, and therefore we need to make it go up. So we would do the same thing to it. So it would be something like interest income would be credited, would be credited to increase it, and that would be the credit. And then the debit would, would be to interest receivable because it's owed to us as of the end of the time period. We loaned money out just like if we rented something and they owe us the money we haven't yet received it. So now we gotta figure out, well, how much are we gonna receive? Well, the loan amount, was the 260,000. Our interest rate rate was uh, 9%. Now I'm going to put it in there as a decimal, 0.09. So that's that 9% move the decimal two places to the left, 0.09. When I hit control enter, it makes it zero. Why? Because we need we need decimals. So I'm going to go to the home tab, going to go to the numbers, going to make two decimals. Now if you put it in a calculator, you want to put it in as 0.09 or you can put it in as uh, 9%, whichever you feel comfortable doing. I'm going to go ahead and underline that. And we're going to say then the um, the amount of interest then would be the 260 times 9%. Now, whenever I do that, we have to ask the question, now what does it mean when we say 9%? 9% is over a certain time period. That time period is usually interest per year. So keep that in mind, just like if we're talking about salary, if I said someone earns $60,000, well, we mean 60,000 a year. When we say 9% interest, we mean, we mean basically 9% a year. That's what we're talking about. So, uh, and that's the same with like mortgage interest or anything. So 9% a year, but it hasn't been a year. How many years, how many months have passed? Only two months. So we could say the months in a year are 12 and try to break this down to how much interest would be owed per month. So okay, uh, there's 12 months in a year, that, and there's a couple different ways we could do this, but this is one way we could do it. We say, well, there's 12 months in a year, and so we're gonna say that equals the 23, four divided by 12, and that'll give us the uh, interest per month. And then we're gonna say, okay, and then how many months have passed? Well, it was November, November 1st, 
that means I'm going to include November on my fingers when I count them out November on my, and December. So that's two months have passed, and therefore the amount will be, I'm going to go ahead and underline that, the uh, 1950 times 2. So when we put this on the books, we're going to have to say that we have a receivable of 3900 and we have interest income that we have earned of 3900 that have not yet been paid. Now I just want to point out that if, if you broke this out not into months but days, we, we could take the same calculation 234 and say it's not if say the transaction didn't happen to be on November 1st, but somewhere in the in the month that we wanted to break it out by the number of days, we could say there's about uh, I'm going to say 360 days in the year. There's usually there's really more like 365, including a leap year. But if we took uh, the 30 times 12, made a nice round months, that's where the 360 often comes from. Many textbooks will use. And then if if we divide that out, we're going to say the 23.4 divided by 360 days. And then we're going to say, well, how many days have passed? Well, it's still it's two months. So we're going to say that it equals. 2 times 30, again, rounding, estimating all months being around 30 rather than rather than accounting uh, for the differences, and, and that will give us the same 65 times the 60. So you'll see this calculated in, in similar ways. Key point you need to know that is interest means interest for a year, generally. All right, next one says the, the correct adjusting entry to uh, uh, accrued and unpaid employee salaries of 9000 700 on December 31st. Okay, so we're gonna make the adjusting entry for basically wages. So that means that if we have our trial balance, what's gonna be the two accounts? There's gonna be one balance sheet account above the blue line, above equity, related to wages or salaries or something like that. And we're gonna say, okay, well that one's gonna be, how about wages expense or salaries expense, whatever the problem uses, something related to payroll, of course. That's gonna be the income statement amount I'm sorry, I think I did that first. That's the income statement amount. What's going to be the balance sheet amount? Something related to wages, salary. That's going to be wages payable, salaries payable, something like that. So we're going to say, okay. And then we know that the expenses only go one way. They go up. They all have debit balances represented by the fact that they do not have brackets in this worksheet. Therefore, to make something go up, we're going to do the same thing to it. In this case, would be another debit. So I'm going to go ahead and debit the wages expense for and then the credit and then I'm gonna credit what are we gonna credit well the other account that's affected there's got to be a debit and there's got to be a credit at least two accounts and that's gonna be this account will be the credit and they gave us the number in this case which is nine seven so even if we don't know exactly what's going on if we can kind of go through those rules for adjusting entries meaning one balance sheet account one income statement account and the income statement accounts only go up therefore this one must be a debit making this one a credit we can we can complete this one and um, not even know really what's going on. What is really going on? It means that we have to record the liability for the fact that the cutoff date and the December 31st is not the same date as we paid the employees. It's not going to be, it's almost never gonna be the same date that we employed the employees. Therefore, we owe as of December 31st employees for wages that they have earned and we have not yet paid them or recognized the fact that we owe them as an expense, that we have consumed their work, and we don't owe it at, we don't have it yet on the books as a liability, meaning we owe for that work being done. And so we need to make that adjustment as of the cutoff date.